so you basically you you you're in America, you're setting up your business, um, and then tragedy strikes actually, and it's uh, it, it, it's just through a um an, a game of touch rugby basically, you know that you're probably playing every single afternoon. So mm. can you tell us what happened there? Yeah, I started for pretty much for um, community and and uh, stress release. I started playing um, touch rugby on the beach with the the boys down in Santa Monica, and I was playing with them, you know, two three times a week uh, for years. And I was not new to the game. I grew up playing it and loved it. And yeah, this one casual Sunday. Um, I don't know, this guy maybe just caught the ball in such a fashion that he thought he was on the pitch in Eden Park against the All Blacks <laughs> and saw me as, I don't know, a, a target to take down. I don't know. I, it, it's such a freak thing because, you know, no one really hears about someone having such a, uh, ending up with such an injury from a touch rugby game. Um, but anyway, he, he ran into me and knock me into next week and I I landed pretty heavily the boys were like all we saw was your feet up in the air and on the back of my head and the ricochet effect um from oh, like a serious whiplash I guess um ended up causing frontal lobe hippocampus and amygdala uh damage and I ended up I lost memory, cognitive speech, like taste, smell, um, vision problems, uh, emotional problems, a lot of pain. It was kind of like fire ants were in my head trying to get out all the time. And I mean, if you can think about any injury you have, like even knee or ankle, when that inflammation there is there, it's, it's so, um, it's so painful. So in your head that, you know, controls everything, your computer, so everything just sort of switched off. Um, no appetite, no, no triggers to drink water, to eat, to, to do anything. So it was, uh, I didn't know what country I was in. I didn't know why I was here or what I was doing. Um, I was a real life Dory. My memory was a, a couple of minutes. No ways. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. How, how long did that sort of carry on for? Um, the worst of it was probably a good nine to 12 months. Um, what? Yeah, and I would say, you know, almost full recovery. There's things that I may never get back and I just deal with now. <clears throat> it was at least two years. Yeah. Wow. And, and so, like, they must have been so shocked because did, did you have symptoms, like, almost straight away, like, when you were lying there? Or, or did um, they sort of... The, the boy said I stood up and made a joke. Uh, I don't remember, but it sounds like me, so that's good. Um, <laughs> just, just still uh, following through on my comedy, so that's good. Um, <laughs> but I do remember it was a couple of hours later and we usually go for lunch after and uh, sitting there with everyone and everything just became blurry. I started to feel like I was going to throw up. I, I felt very confused and felt like everyone was speaking another language that I couldn't understand. And, wow. you know, I uh, just was like, I, and, and this has come down to awareness thing, especially for women. We're not really educated on like a concussion like that. Like, especially men playing contact sports, you guys are a lot more aware. So you would be able to go, oh, hey, I got hit like this. I got this. I probably have a concussion. I should do X. For me, I was like, I must be dehydrated and hormonal. Um, I'll go home and mm. go to bed. Oh, and no way. I knew enough about them, but not for it to happen to me. It hadn't happened to me like that before. So mm. I went home and I went to bed and um, super lucky, woke up the next day. Mm. And one of the guys that had been on the um, uh, playing in the game with me the day before was coming around to uh, pre-organize to help me with some work and a delivery. And he said that he turned up and he said, I was walking around in circles. I was not making sense. I was dropping things. I was really agitated. I was repeating myself. He said, you were, I was so confused. And he's like, I think that you have a, have a concussion. And uh, from there, just uh, followed up with uh, friends that were doctors because I didn't have insurance. And mm. they checked in on me to make sure, you know, no bleed on the brain, that kind of thing. And because, you know, it's a bit of a joke over here for uh, us uh, immigrants, I guess. Don't t- send me to the hospital. No doctor. I don't care if my legs cut off, put me on a plane and send me back to Australia. It would be cheaper. So um, <laughs> didn't go to the doctor. And um, and when my friends like visited, they're like, okay, so it's quite bad. Um, 
but typically, you know, you have to wait a few months to see if it gets better, what it's going to do. And then three months later, I went to a proper doctor in, in an office and uh, he did all the tests and he's like, yeah, it's, it's a big one. It's probably going to be about two years for recovery. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. You, you know, what? I don't think uh, you, you mentioned men knowing about concussion a bit more, but actually it's actually quite shocking even doctors and stuff, there's a way too little known about concussion mm. and awareness. It's, it's getting better slowly but surely. But um, on the on the on the field side, I still hear it all the time. Like youngsters have a big knock, and the the coaches are still like, oh yeah, um, you know, two weeks or one week off, and it's just not enough. Like people, mm. and, and also the thing that people don't realize is that it doesn't always have. To, you don't always have to have a massive amount of symptoms to have had a concussion. Now, yours must have been really bad, obviously, but um, you know, it's a massive thing that people need to be understanding more because it can happen from touch rugby. It's not all you know, rugby games and it, it can be other things. And so I'm glad that you're bringing this up because it's, it's, um, it's actually very important for, for parents and for coaches and things like that to have some understanding of because it's that serious. You know, if you yeah. take a second knock, it's really bad. Mm, yeah, exactly. and, and Craig, there's actually, I don't know if you've seen the movie, uh, but it's with uh, Will Smith. Oh, I love that movie. I think, what is it called concussion or is it called? I think it is. Yeah, and it's about American football and yeah. basically. The South African doctor? Yes. Yeah, oh, no, was he South yeah. African? Yeah, yeah. Or, or Nigerian. I can't remember. But, um, but yeah, basically, I guess what happens is these guys are playing American football and they have clashes of the head all the time, not just in, in matches, but during training. And um, the long-term effects of it are like serious, yeah. serious, um, you know, like a like mix of serious issues. Um, I think they call it uh, CTE, where they're having so these. Um, it's got a big long name. People can Google it. Um, I'm not going to say it, um, but it is having the long-term effects that since that movie, uh, which I don't think the NFL wanted it to come out, no. um, more and more people, more and more guys and even wives are, that have divorced husbands have come forward sort of talking about what they've gone through after from these repeated head, head injuries without any support or a break for recovery and what you mentioned before about the awareness about it and it's only since I've been through it is uh gosh how how more common it is than um than anyone's like talking about and that I think it's difficult because every single person is different and so every everyone that I met there's and like we've said before there's no one way to treat anything but there's not there's almost no two people that had the same um exact same uh problems after a concussion they're like varying depending on what you had going on before or like the kind of person you are what or where it hits or where it's damaging and so it's really really hard to um just give one protocol for a head That's injury it. it's crazy i actually had a patient that was playing tennis and she had a, and she got hit by the tennis ball and it was a serious concussion and like wow. you know there's another example you, you it's not in the you're not in this environment that you would expect. So you don't think it's concussion initially, which is, which is pretty crazy. And, and actually talking about that, Gareth, what you, that movie and stuff, like people are actually saying that the whole CTE story, uh, Lonnie is like, um, almost as bad as smoking was because in some ways people are covering it up. They don't really want to accept that this is actually a reality. And, and, uh, so people are suppressing this information like big time because, uh, yeah, but it's which is pretty crazy. But um, it, down the track, they they reckon with you know the depression rates and all that that comes from these sportsmen and women, um, it will eventually become apparent how how it was suppressed, you know, for a long time, because the clubs don't want it. Um. Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air, stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range, gotta be quick so.